Okay, today I want to talk about camber. Not only in the front, but in the rear there's camber also. And I want to talk about what it does and how it affects the car in kind of two different ways. So let's talk about camber and roll the intro video. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. First thing I want to talk about camber is what we call camber thrust and how it works. Basically, think of your front tires or even your rear when you run stagger, you'll, your car will have camber to it. Think about your front tires with that right front and think about it as a trampoline. And when you push on the center of a trampoline, you're going to have a certain amount of stretch to that tire. Well, when that tire wants to roll into the contact patch and then roll back out, it's going to add a thrust to the left and help turn your car. I call that camber thrust. It's basically a stretching of the tire. I'm always talking about a stretching of the tire as being a way to get traction and grip. Well, when you stretch a tire sideways with camber, you're also getting that thrust left. The more camber you have in your front tires, easier it'll help turn that car. There's also something with camber which is really reliant on getting your contact patch even so your tire wears evenly and you get equal heat across your tire. That is like the most common thought about camber. So when the car rolls over, the, the tire e evenly heats across. It came from a lot of asphalt stuff years ago. But there's other aspects of camber that come into play here. Another is camber stretching of the tire, basically. When you have your tire and it's straight up and down, let's say, and you want to put a little bit of camber in your right front. Actually, I'm facing you, so the camber on your right front will be something like that. What will happen is, is the outside, if you have no camber, will have your bulge. And the inside will actually be like flat and unflexed and flabby. But when you put camber in that tire and you load that inside tire, it squishes that tire so that bulge is on the outside. And the stretch will come as the car rolls over and goes into the corner. It'll actually start to stretch that outside and put equal weight on that tire throughout as it stretches to equalize the tire. That's a big part of camber is keeping that stretch in the tire and then help turning the car. And it goes all along with it with the stretch and the camber shove. Now, this happens on both sides. You know, you think about your left front losing weight and everything, but if you can keep that left front planted and you can keep weight and keep that camber good on that left front, this will help turn your front end. We have a lot of issues lately with arrow push and everything else and I think what happens is that left front loses so much grip that we're getting into a situation where we're basically steering the whole car off the right front and the left front is doing very little. So I think an emphasis needs to be put on keeping that whole front end planted, keeping good camber on both sides and keeping it thrusted to help turn you into the corner. Keeping the tires stretched and keeping them working so when you actually put slip angle into the front to turn the tires, it works with the camber and your whole front end sticks better. Let's go over on the drawing board and we'll talk a little bit about and I'll draw some diagrams on what I'm talking about with camber. First thing I want to talk about with camber 
is the old obvious, I guess I call it. This is what everybody always concentrated on. When you put camber in your tire like that, let's say this is the right front, that's the most thought of camber on the, on the car, basically. And when you put camber into the tire like this and you get your control arms to roll, eventually your camber, you want your tire to roll evenly so you have equal pressure across the tire and your tire temps will be the same. That's the conventional thinking with camber is the change when your front end squashes and you go into the corner, especially now with these soft front ends where you're sitting them on a bump stop or on a camber, on a bump spring, these camber changes are really important. But there are other aspects rather than just straightening the tire up so it has equal pressure and equal heat generates across the tire. Another aspect of camber, which I don't think everybody realizes, some of the some of the people do, is think about this like a trampoline set on its side, where you have your rubber stretched here, and you have your spindle and your hub in here. When you put a load on that, going this way, the tire is going to want to stretch and go this way. The tire rotates and goes into the contact patch, it'll be stretched. And what will happen is when it comes out of the contact patch, it's going to want to shove that front end and help steer you, your car. So basically over here, you think about pulling the inside and the outside of the tire. And stretch it like a trampoline when you're going to the corner. It's going to want to push out so you get that snapping motion back and help turn the car. The more camber you have, both in your left and your right front, you get what you call a camber shove because of the stretch. The last aspect I wanted to talk about with camber is what happens to the bulge in the tires. So let's say you put a good amount of camber in the car and you'll the tire will actually bulge towards the outside and towards the inside because the tires, when you push down on it, since the, cam the tire is tilted, it's going to want to form a bulge here. This is over-exaggerated, of course. Then when you go into the corner and the tire starts to straight up a little bit and you get that camber shove of the tire going this way, your contact patch and your stretch and your pressure will kind of even out. Without camber, think about this. Without camber, if your tire is straight up and down and your tire is bulged, let's say evenly on both sides, when, what happens is, is when you go into the corner, your tire is actually going to get warped this way. And this will just be a flabby, unstretched piece here. What you want to do is pre-stretch your tire with camber so when you go into the corner you're getting an equal loading in this tire so you don't get this stretch in this flabby, no, I call it a no traction area here. And then this is of course bent over onto the sidewall some and you're not going to get any traction there. So that's another good aspect of why we need camber in the car. Always think in terms of stretching your tire to get traction and what's happening to your tire when it actually goes in and gets a force applied to it, where the tire actually meets the road and how much pressure, down pressure, is on that tire. One thing I really wanted to mention really quick is about stagger and camber. Now, it's probably not going to happen too much with late models. But you can see when you put stagger in the car, the right rear will be cambered a little bit. I think what the problem is that stagger actually kills the car more than it'll help in the rear because of what they call stagger slip. As your car goes around the track at various points, the stagger has to catch up with itself if your car wants to go straight. 
So what happens is, is it balances between the left tire or the right tire slipping and the left tire slipping at different intervals. The stretch comes out of the tire and you lose traction very briefly, but on a slick track, I think stagger in the rear actually kills the car more than it helps. If you like this camber video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. The notifications aren't spammy, it's just whenever you get into YouTube, it puts my videos in there for stuff that's recently posted and gives you an indication that I have a new video up. That's all it is. So ring the bell and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.